When we see the locusts invading Egypt, it is as if we go back in time and remember the stories from the Bible. The terrifying situation they cause makes us think of the ancient plagues found in the Bible. This current event makes us reflect on how nature can impact people's lives. The presence of locusts reminds us of human vulnerability in the face of natural forces. This situation connects us in unexpected ways with the ancient accounts that have shaped the way we understand the divine and the mysterious. In this way, faced with the return of locusts to Egypt, we are challenged to think about how ancient stories remain relevant and to find meaning in the relationships between the present and the past, between what is natural and what is supernatural and what is supernatural. Exodus 10 records the eighth and ninth plagues sent by God to Egypt. The biblical study of Exodus 10 clearly shows how God hardened Pharaoh so that he would resist the release of the Israelites so that they could go into the desert to worship the Lord. The two plagues described in Exodus 10 were the last before the final plague that resulted in the death of all of Egypt's firstborn. Exodus 9 ends with the information that Pharaoh sinned again and hardened his heart to the point of not letting the children of Israel leave Egypt. Exodus 9, 3,435. So Exodus 10 begins by reporting that God hardened Pharaoh's heart and the hearts of his officials. Ogish Ken. 1. God did not harden a pious and caring heart, but an unrepentant and already naturally hardened heart. The purpose of this hardening was the opportunity for the manifestation of God's signs among the Egyptians, as well as so that the Israelites could perpetuate the report of divine manifestations in Egypt. In this sense, the plagues of Egypt had a pedagogical purpose. God ordered Moses and Aaron to appear before Pharaoh and ask him how long he would refuse to let the people of Israel go into the desert. Divine messengers also warned Pharaoh that if he refused to release the Israelites, the next day God would send locusts that would cover the entire land of Egypt and destroy all available food. Given the Lord's warning, Egyptian officials advised Pharaoh to let the Israelite men go into the desert to serve God. Officials judged that Egypt was already ruined enough to run the risk of suffering from yet another plague. Then Moses and Aaron were taken to Pharaoh, and the king of Egypt asked them which of the Israelites would go to the desert to worship. Moses replied that all the Israelites would go, that is, the young, the old, the men, the old, the men, the women, and also their entire flock. All the people had to be present to celebrate the Lord. There was no room to negotiate restrictions. Exodus 10, Exodus 10, 89. But Pharaoh did not accept this position and said that he could release only adult men and then expelled Moses and Aaron from his presence. The Eighth Plague Faced with Pharaoh's new refusal, God ordered Moses to stretch out his hand over Egypt so that the locusts would come over the entire land to devour everything that was left after the rain of stones. Exodus 10, 12 Moses did according to the word of the Lord. Then the Bible says that God caused an east wind to blow over the land that brought locusts that infested Egypt. The locusts were very numerous and covered the surface of the entire Egyptian land and ate everything that was available, so that there was not a single green leaf left on the trees or on the grass of the field. Faced with the impact of the eighth plague, the biblical text says that Pharaoh hurried to call Moses and Aaron. This means that Egypt had reached a critical point and the threat of a major crisis was imminent. Before them, Pharaoh confessed that he had sinned against the Lord and asked them to once again pray to the Lord so that the plague would come to an end. As soon as Moses left Pharaoh's presence, he prayed to the Lord and a strong wind carried the locusts away from Egypt, throwing them into the Red Sea. The Bible says that not a single locust was left in all of Egypt. However, once again, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and the Egyptian ruler did not let the Israelites go. The Ninth Plague After the plague of locusts, God ordered Moses to once again stretch out his hand to the sky as thick darkness would cover Egypt. 
Moses obeyed the Lord's command and darkness covered Egypt for three days. The darkness was so intense that the Egyptians were unable to do anything during that period. But the children of Israel, on the other hand, had light in their dwellings. Obviously, this scenario revealed that there was no natural explanation for the darkness that covered Egypt. It was not an eclipse of the sun, not even a sandstorm. That darkness was supernatural. That darkness was supernatural. They were a sign that testified to the greatness of the Lord. The ninth plague of Egypt, recorded in the book that of Exodus, adds another dramatic chapter to the narrative of the plague sent by God. After the devastation caused by the previous plagues, the ninth plague appears as a continuation of the confrontation between divine sovereignty and the Pharaoh's resistance. The ninth plague is characterized by darkness that covered all of Egypt, a darkness so thick that people could barely move. This extraordinary event goes beyond a simple weather condition. It is a supernatural manifestation of divine power. This darkness, which persisted for three days, not only enveloped Egypt physically, but also symbolized the spiritual darkness that permeated the nation. God, in his sovereignty, chose this phenomenon as a sign to get Pharaoh's attention and show his authority. However, even in the face of this evident proof of divine power, Pharaoh remained obstinate in not freeing the Israelites. The ninth plague, therefore, serves as a crucial link in the sequence of events that would lead to the final plague, the death of the firstborn. This dense, impenetrable darkness represents not only an extraordinary natural phenomenon, but also Pharaoh's persistent stubbornness in not submitting to God's will. As we explore the context of the ninth plague, we are led to contemplate not only the physical impact, but also the spiritual implications of this divine demonstration. The confrontation between light and darkness, both literally and figuratively, paints a complex panorama revealing timeless lessons about the importance of obedience before divine sovereignty. If you are intrigued by the fascinating biblical stories and want to explore more about the eternal teachings present in the book of Exodus, don't miss the opportunity to subscribe to our channel. Discover deep insights, inspiring reflections, and engaging studies on God's Word. Subscribe now so you don't miss an episode. Click the subscribe button below and activate the bell to receive all updates. Join us on this journey of discovery and learning. God's Word has much to teach us, and we want to share these valuable lessons with you. Sign up and be part of our community 